Hey everybody, welcome to our seafood survey data. Um, super stoked you guys are working on this data set. This is one of the data sets that I've, I've been most interested in and digging into for some time and just haven't had the time. I thought I would do it over my sabbatical this past year, but because of pandemic and various things, uh, other things got in the way and distracted me. Um, anyway, this is going to be, this is a great data set. It's awesome. Needs a lot of uh, uh, coding and tweaking and stuff, but it, it's a perfect one for you guys to dig dig into. And as you'll see, it can go in a lot of different directions. Um, so I'm stoked. I'm wearing a I'm wearing Alaskan seafood shirt right now, just for you guys. So um, let's take a quick look at the data and see what you guys are, have to play with. Okay, so the first thing to say is this: for those of you that haven't taken coastal um, and may not be familiar with this, this is this is a data set that was created by you and your previous students that were in our coastal marine management class over the last many, many years. Um, the, the driving overarching question here is simply, um, if we walk into, in Los Angeles, Ventura, Santa Barbara counties, if we walk into a store, a, a market, or a restaurant and try to buy seafood, can we make more informed decisions on that seafood? Can we buy more sustainably harvested seafood, or can we not? And so that's really the nut. So essentially, uh, students go into various um, markets and restaurants, and they just look at what's for sale. They ask a couple questions that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but primarily, they're just going to enumerate all the seafood items that are for sale. So either the, the fish in the counter or the items on the menu, et cetera. And they do their best to fill in as much information as we can. And, um, and they'll ask the, if there's something that's not entirely clear, they'll ask the server or the fishmonger, but if he or she doesn't know, they don't know. And so, so we're not, we're not trying to sweat people or, or, um, you know, cause them stress or whatever. We also are taking whatever they say on face value. So they might be intentionally misinformed. They might be accidentally misinformed, but we're just recording what they, what they reported to us. Okay. Now the data is broken down into two, uh, well, the, there's two different ways of categorizing. One is markets and restaurants. They're similar, but a little teeny bit different. And then uh, we have the, the quantification of items in the menu and then some qualitative questions that we asked. So there's uh, you know different tabs for each of these things. So let's take a look. So first here, um, this is, uh, we're looking at the 2007 data here. And, and the 2007 data is the one that's the most cleaned. After 2007, it's still, they all still need a lot of cleaning and binning and everything, but we can look at this one as an example. Okay, so uh, now you'll notice that uh, this is the quantitative uh, one, and so uh, the, the, this is the uh, market quantitative one. And so in the markets, we might find a case where uh, there was one item uh, oh, actually, I take that back. This is this has been sorted. That's I think why it looks like this. Um, anyway, so so there'll be multiple items from most markets. So in other words, most places are selling more than one item of seafood. And so it's going to go on is so this student here. So first we have the the time frame that the student sampled. Fall, in this case, fall two thousand seven. We have and let me make this a little bigger just so you guys can see it perhaps a bit better on the screen. Okay, so we have. Um, uh, the student, or the era they did the survey, what, what class it was basically, the observer, um, the store name, uh, the location or the address of the store, the city and county of the store, and then the day of the week that the survey was done. This first one doesn't have uh, missing, so you guys need to fill that one in, for example. The date of the survey, the time of the survey, the price range of the market um, or a restaurant. Now this is one that we have to readdress. So this was one in the first few years of the, of the collecting of this data. We were trying really hard to have about a third of our data, if we could, from the cheap places, about a third of our data from the mid-range, about a third of our data from the expensive places. Um, that hasn't always held up, and also we've gotten into debates as to what is cheap, what is mid-range, etc. So that's one that once uh, we get all the data clean that we can have a conversation and go back and re-bin um, a lot of these uh, uh, responses. Same thing with cuisine. So this is just a quick and dirty, what kind of food they serve, general, uh, Mexican, sushi restaurant, you know, whatever. Um, and this would also, this will also need re-examining and making sure that it's the standardization has been done right. The price categorization is just a numerical way to uh, describe the, the um, price range. 
Um, okay, now we get into our first uh, important piece of data. So this is how was the fish harvested from the ocean? And so in this case, it was wild caught. So meaning just, you know, traditional wild caught stuff, not any special uh, techniques meant to improve sustainability. It wasn't mariculture, etc. So wild caught. What the, um, uh, again, this is a market. So markets, usually we have better data in terms of the species specificness. Sometimes people just say unknown fish, right? Or unknown lobster or something of that nature. And so in this case, it's, this is an abalone. The species is unknown abalone. Uh, this species of abalone was unknown, but it came from Chile. So it, that, that restricts the, the possible species. In this case, this was a, a amberjack type of tuna. Um, uh, this is an anchovy, et cetera. And then uh, that's, so the students only put in um, the product name or whatever and the species. Um, you will need to clean this up. You will need to, this is, a, this is, a, these categories will need standardization. Some people, sometimes people spell abalone with a capital A, sometimes the lowercase a, et cetera. And then once that's all done, the next step is this. And this is one that um, we'll have to talk about again further. This is a binning of the, diff the, t the organism in different taxonomic um, uh, units. So sometimes we can tell that it's a, uh, you know, the family of the, of the item. Sometimes we can tell the genus, but we don't know the species. Sometimes we know the species, et cetera. Um, and there's also issues because people use the common name and the common names aren't necessarily, sometimes there's many common names that refer to the same species. So, so this is, this is a nut that we'll have to dig into, um, later. And then, um, uh, this is, uh, how the item is being offered. It's either unprepared fresh. That would be in the, um, in the seafood uh, counter. Now, almost everything is frozen in terms of what we consume. Um, they just thaw it out. But nevertheless, this is what how it's presented for sales. Unprepared fresh. Prepared fresh. This would be, so this unprepared fresh would be something like a filet, right? Ready, you can just take home and cook. Um, the prepared would be something like ceviche, where it's it's still, you're buying it, you know, by, in bulk, but there's been some, some seasoning to it. There's possibly been some type of cooking to it, et cetera. Uh, and the same for uh, items in the freezer, so unprocessed, just, you know, frozen filet type stuff. Processed, again, where the, something's been done. Maybe it's fish sticks. Maybe it's been cooked or breaded or something of that nature. And then uh, processed and canned. Now, now canned is the term we've always used, but now sometimes this stuff is in, say, a, a plastic bag or a pouch. That would still go in, in the can. We should probably just, you know, change this from canned to packaged. But in any event, that's what that is. The weight, if there's a weight denoted, um, and the count sometimes with things like uh, clams and mussels, there'll be a count number there. That this is we pretty much don't use this anymore, but but uh, you might see this. And the unit price. So in this case, this would be the unit price. This was this thing was uh, 15 ounces, I guess, and it was 10.99. Okay, so so that that that's best we can do. Uh, the, the, the clearest data, the cleanest data, the best data for us is if we can get price per pound. And usually we can only get that in the fresh, uh, uh, section of the market. But, um, but this is $49 a pound for this stuff this is $7.99 a pound for this stuff. This is $13.95 for this one, et cetera, as we go down. And then the location of where the seafood was harvested. Um, again, a lot of, if, if they have more specificity like Peru or a particular island in Peru, that will be written down, but generally speaking, the best we can get is the country, if at all. So sometimes you know it's California. You don't know where in Cal California. Sometimes you know it's in Southern California. Sometimes you know it's in the Channel Islands, but more typically you just know the country. And then there's additional information that we don't always have, but that would be the brand. Sometimes they'll, they'll tell us the processor location, if it's processed, which is great. That helps us with our calculations for uh, emissions and carbon footprint and stuff, but, but we don't always have that. And then this is essentially a tick box. So if they tick the box, this gets a one. If they didn't tick it, it gets a zero. So, um, so this would be a Marine Stewardship Council, a third party certification saying that this seafood is sustainably harvested. Farm raise, this would be uh, aquaculture or mariculture. Regular wild caught, which is that and I don't know are the most common ones. Uh, dolphin safe refers to a, ca uh, a labeling of tuna. And then some other descriptor, they might say, uh, hand, hand, uh, harpooned or something of that nature. And in which case, if somebody ticked that, the, that other descriptor should be written in. And there's potentially a huge variety of these. If they, if it was a, 
MSC uh, um, item, it should also include a number, a certification number off the label. Now for ease, we're mostly talking about marine stuff, but just because sometimes we also see rainbow trout and things of that nature, we also have a tick mark, and, and the default thing for the data collections is, hey, just, just get everything. So if it is a freshwater fish, let's say, um, it should also have a tick here. Um, we can choose to exclude those later from the analysis, but, but they're entered into the database. And then similarly, another one that, that can kind of skew things sometimes are if it's just eggs. So this would be row, or this would be things like caviar. And so if they're just eggs, sometimes the price is wildly different from, from uh, the, the price for the rest of the animal. And so, so uh, eggs is another um, thing that we might want to exclude from our, or include from the analysis later on. Um, weight in pounds. Uh, now, sometimes they include it in things other than pounds, but for standardization, we typically use pounds, unfortunately, even though it'd be great to do it all in kilograms, um, etc. And then these other things over here are things we'll have to talk about, and we'll have to re-bin um, uh, re, uh, and, and, and go through them. But basically, the idea is we have a couple different ways of assessing the sustainability of the seafood. One is the MSC, so that's if, if it was if it was used uh, or if it was a certified, you know, sustainable product. That's one thing. Um, and there are other things that come on in recent years, other types of certifications. Uh, Seafood Watch, which is our, our standard default one. Now, when we started this, people had to use wallet cards for Seafood Watch. Now, most people just use the app on their phone. Um, and so this uh, does the best that we can with uh, uh, saying if this item was was you know, Seafood Watch bins items into red, yellow, and uh, green based on how sustainable they are. Red meaning avoid, green meaning okay to eat, yellow meaning, well, it's better than the red. And sometimes if people say the, the species and they know we know where it's from, we can say it, it is a yellow item, let's say. More typically, because the species is not fully described or we don't know the, the, the full species type and the full location, it could be one of a different, one of a, a range of um, items. And so in that case, we give the most optimistic score in terms of its sustainability rating and the most cautionary um, or conservative. Now, this is Seafood Watch. There's all kinds of other things that we should probably add in here. Um, and we should also talk about when. So some of these, so this is originally, this data here for this, this 2007 data was based on the Seafood Watch recommendations in 2007. These recommendations are constantly evolving. So we have to also have a discussion as to when we get to this stage of the data uh, cleaning, um, if we want to use just one assessment, say the most recent um, Seafood Watch assessment, or if we want to use them per year as we go um, forward or both. And then this is stuff, again, we'll, we'll need, we need more time to talk about this, but this is some estimates based on the transportation distance of this item. The cool thing about seafood is that, generally speaking, there's not a huge amount of carbon input other than the capture and the, and the transportation of it. So the transportation of the seafood item is where almost all of the carbon, at least for wild-caught seafood, where that's embodied. Whereas if we talk about tomatoes or lettuce, it's very complex to figure out what the carbon footprint of a given tomato is. It has to do with all the, the water inputs and the fertilizer inputs and the tending inputs and all that kind of stuff. With, with fish, it's a much clearer process. And so we, I, I have a simple model and we can choose to use that or we can develop a new one, which would be fun to talk about with you guys this year, um, uh, of how we estimate things such as uh, uh, how much energy was embodied in the transporting of that item to here in Southern California. And then from that, we can calculate different things like carbon and, and, and volatile organics and stuff like that. Um, and so there we go. So that's market quanti uh, quantitative data. We also have qualitative data. So qualitative data is um, now we for a given market, there might be lots and lots of of, of lines for a given market, right? Because there's each each row is an individual item, an individual piece of the data set. Here, um, for the qualitative stuff, every in institution, every place we're sampling, it lives on a single row. Okay, now so again, it's the person that did the sampling, the location, all this and that, etc. As we, just like we've talked about before, and these should these should match identically the stuff on the um, uh, individual item data sheet. But here we we. Oh, sorry. There's a, one more thing that uh, that uh, before I get into talking about the survey responses, this is just an estimate of uh, how much of the meat counter space is devoted to seafood, and how much of the freezer space is devoted to seafood. We typically do this by just counting the number of sections 
you know, the, the number of, uh, say, freezer doors, how much of those have seafood, how much don't. And this is just a, a, a gross indicator of, is this place really, does this place really have a lot of seafood? Is it a major, if it's a seafood specialty place, essentially it'll be 100% of the, of the offerings. If it's a major market that just sells a little bit of seafood, it'll be, you know, more modest level. If it's some uh, counter, counter market or corner market that doesn't do much at all, then that won't, uh, uh, you know, that, that won't have uh, very much at all, if any, uh, freezer space devoted to seafood. Okay. Now the main thing is, uh, here we have our, our raw, um, answers, and then we need to code these. And so you guys will be doing a lot of that. Um, but this first question says, are you in, in this, in this case this is asking the person at the fish counter of the market? If there isn't a person, if they don't have a fish counter, then this would be any of the, any of the employees there. And in the case of restaurants, we ask this of the wait staff, the, whoever's uh, waiting on us. And the idea is, um, so the first one is just, are they vaguely familiar with the idea of sustainable seafood? So what we say is, are you familiar with MSC, Seafood Watch, or any of the guides for um, uh, helping us uh, select for sustainable seafood? And they'll say no. So they'll either say yes, no, or probably not. And, and you'll notice that sometimes they'll just say yes, no, and sometimes they actually put their full answers, which is great. But when we code it over here, that's it. We're just going to go with whatever they said, yes or no. Um, next question is how many, so this is the person themselves, the, the, the server themselves, let's say, the, the fishmonger themselves. The next question is asking about, and the next, the rest of the questions are asking about what the customers do. So they're not asking about this person's experience. They want to know what the clientele ask when they come to this particular place. So the first one is how many customers ask about, uh, you know, how sustainable the seafood is. And again, most people will say none. Um, we try to have them, if, if they say anything other than none or, or everybody, we try to say, you know, they might just say eh, a few, we try to ask them to, to, uh, you know, better. So does that mean like, one in 10? Does that mean one in a hundred? You know, that type of stuff. So, so we write whatever they say down, but we, we try to bin it and you'll see over, as you look over here, we have some guides. So if they say none at 0%. If they say almost none. We've been that as 1%, et cetera. Um, uh, so that's the first question. Next question is, um, how common, or excuse me, what, what's, what, wait, sorry, I think I skipped. Yeah. So how sustainable. Next one is, um, how many customers ask about the source so they might not be asking about seafood, but they're asking, you know, where did it come from uh, 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 about the seafood? And the last question is just an open-ended one. It's just, what's the most common thing that your your customers, if they are going to buy a piece of seafood, that they ask about seafood? And so this is highly varied. And this is one that, again, we just put down what they say, but this is one that we bin. Um, and, uh, and I've done some binning of the early data but that's pretty much needs to all be thrown out and, and you can use it as a guide, but we have a lot more data that we need to, um, that you guys need to categorize. And so you need to help us with that. Um, and then if there's any just general store comments. Okay. So that's basically, that, that's our market data. Um, we also uh, have the same data for restaurants, which is very, very similar. The only little bit of difference here is that, um, cause we're doing the same thing in this case is the quantitative, the items being sold in the restaurant. Same idea as before. All the stuff is the same, except now we have the dish name because it, it'll be listed something on the something on the menu. Then we have a bin as to whether it's an appetizer or an entree. Um, unclear how much that matters, but it, it matters more in terms of the price when we're trying to understand the price per item. Um, uh, everything else is the same um, as uh, or the same categories as before. And again, in the uh, qualitative responses, it's the same as before. So there's all, all kinds of other stuff to talk about, but real quickly, that, that that's the overview of the data. And looking forward to you guys uh, working on this. We're going to have a great time, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for t taking this on. This is, this is going to be a killer, uh, really, really fun uh, capstone, I think, for everybody involved.